Uh oh. <clears throat> we are live. That. There we are. Hello, yeah, I, pod smashers, pod smashers of the internet, and welcome to another 80 bit news casts. We <laughs> are <laughs> your hosts. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, we are your host, Penguin and Termite. I am Penguin. I am Termite, and we are a weekly video game news show running you through news from the last week. Uh, we're that here. We lo- care about. That we care about. You care about. That's right. Not everything, because we would be here all day long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be here forever if we did that. Uh, uh, so that's what we are. What are we going to talk about? What is this week's news headlines? Well, first, happy Martin Luther King Day. Happy Martin Luther King Day to you as well, and to the that's internet right. abroad. It is a day that means a lot more, I feel like, to a larger a, a larger population of America based on the uh, events of our last year. So I think more more people are appreciating what the man did back in the 60s um, and are, are willing to celebrate this day. So, and I also know the black community has been celebrating Martin Luther King yeah. for longer than the rest of us. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it's just it's a great day. So, a good day to reflect on uh, Martin Luther King. Anyways, so I hope you've taken time to do that. Well, what are we talking about today? Uh, we have a bunch of news stories, so we're not sure we're going to cover all of this. So if anything gets cut, um, we are going to cut. I'm going to talk about a couple of cy- uh, Cyberpunk CD Project Red stories at the end of this. And if anything gets cut, it's going to be those. Um, so, but what we are for sure going to talk about are these several stories. Um, Lucasfilm uh, game, Lucasfilm Games uh, announced a bunch of different things, uh, so we're going to talk about a couple of those. We're going to talk about um, the ESA and their donations um, after certain events this past week. <laughs> what a crazy <laughs> week! Gosh, has yep. this week been a year? Because it feels like this week's been a year mm-hmm. um, since we last recorded. Uh, so the USJ announced it is postponing the opening of Super Nintendo World because of COVID nineteen. Um, Pokemon Snap's release date was announced, so we'll talk about that. And uh, and then there are a couple of CD Projekt Red things we're talking about. There was a big expose by Jason Schreier, and there's a lot to unpack there, but hopefully we'll get to it. But if not, they love Eve. Um, so, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, like Termite said, we are uh, going to talk about the news things that we care about. We're going to give you our spin, our take on them, because we are more... We are more pundit than like BBC. <laughs> We're not just trying to give you the facts and then move on. We are trying to give you our thoughts on the facts um, as much as possible. We want you to drop stuff for us in chat, and we will respond to it. Um, but we will wait till the end to respond to it so that we can kind of be laser focused on talking about the news. Mm-hmm. But we want we want you to express your thoughts, your feelings, corrections, comments, concerns. Um, praise, whatever. So feel free to do that, and we'll address it later. So, anything else, Termite? Yes, the reason we do that is because we want this to be a solid news show that can go live on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, just know that at twitch.tv slash 80bitpodsmash, every Monday night at 8 p.m., we bring you this news show live. And every Wednesday night over at twitch.tv slash 80bitpodsmash, we do a live video game play stream alternate between the two of us and sometimes we do it together every single week on wednesdays also we have a weekly so you spend hmm? you spend any amount of time either watching the youtube videos later or listening to the podcast and if you spend any amount of that time listening to us screaming at your your speakers or your screen and and frustrated by the fact that we can't respond to you you can actually just scream at us in chat when mm-hmm. we're live we <laughs> so can, yep. your incentive, come scream at us live <laughs> you should do that speaking of our podcast we have a weekly video game podcast it's smashes ideas that you care about with video games where gaming goes to grab a beer and that episode those episodes go live monday at midnight every monday on all of your favorite podcast platforms and you can find all of the information about everything i just said at 80 bit pod smash.com that's our landing website so go check us out if you like us give us a review hit the subscribe buttons do all of the things to help you get notified so that you know our goings ons click all right what am i clicking on so we are going to go ahead and talk about the news right all right let's do it so last week we talked about how lucasfilm games the name came up and we were like "Ooh, suspicious that maybe maybe this deal with ea is kind of up and they're gonna be doing some things we had no details about what happened that was on monday night so tuesday happened and there was another news hit on wednesday so we're gonna talk about what was announced on that tuesday the day after our news show Literally last week the day after, yep. after our entire discussion about how we were suspicious that ea's exclusivity deal on all things lucasfilm was going to be up and lo and behold another chink in that armor came in the form of this announcement which was 
Lucasfilm announced, or Lucasfilm Games announced they would be partnering with Bethesda and it's Machine Games, right? Mm-hmm. Is the developer, yep. the sub developer, or whatever. Yep. Uh, and they are the guys who made Wolfenstein, yes. the more recent Wolfenstein's, okay? Yep. Um, and they are going to be creating an Indiana Jones title. <laughs> yes. So Bethesda just tweeted this out. It was a small little teaser. You can go to Bethesda's Twitter account, at Bethesda, and watch the little teaser trailer that has some Indiana Jones uh, memorabilia and music. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the PR blip. I'll just read it a small paragraph. In major news for fans of the cinematic icon, Luke's Film Games announced today that a new Indiana J- Jones game will be swinging our way, being developed by the award-winning studio Machine Games and executive produced by game industry icon Todd Howard of Bethesda Game Studios. The game will tell a wholly original, standalone tale set at the height of the career of the famed adventurer. Mm-hmm. So... That's amazing. Todd Howard is an incredibly busy man because he's also working on Starfield and Elder Scrolls mm-hmm. Six, <laughs> and so uh, now they're going to throw this at him. And Machine Games, what a great pick for a studio. Uh, I think yeah. it, I think it's going to be fantastic. Uh, they're a solid developer. They use um, id Tech to make uh, Wolfenstein. It's a fast-paced, very difficult shooter. Uh, great story. I actually have a copy of one of them that I haven't played through yet, so I'm dying to to get into that at some point. Um, but yeah, Indiana Jones, this is a great... What what you can kind of pull out of this announcement and the fact that it even happened is I love what Lucasfilm Games is already doing. Look at who's out there making great games and partner with them to let them do what's best. Uh, they did that yeah. with Spider-Man. And, or Marvel did that with Spider-Man. It's a good example. It's I mean, Marvel is under the Disney umbrella, but Marvel Games is totally separate. So no, it's not the same strategist. But what Marvel has done with getting Insomniac Games to make a Spider-Man game for them, what theoretically could have been amazing with Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics with the Marvel Avengers game, unfortunately it was a flop, but they looked at what that studio could do and leveraged them instead of trying to come up with their own studio to do something silly, uh, instead of just, like, you know, pushing out IP that's popular and and making flops. Like, this is a good strategy. It's good. This is awesome. I'm excited. And it's I hope been so. I mean, Bethesda is no known for the occasional flop or two, and I know the most r- most recent one, Youngblood. I think Wolfenstein Youngblood was not the ho- best received uh, of the of the trilogy. I think, mm-hmm. um, but that's you know, you're you're right. I think that you know Bethesda's track record for the most part still speaks for itself. And mm-hmm. uh, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, Indiana Jones I think is going to be in good hands. It'll be exciting to see, as you noted in the notes there, that it's the first non Star Wars AAA game from Lucas. Yep films properties in years there have been indiana jones games in the past but mm-hmm. not many compared to the amount of star wars games there have been yep so yeah it's pretty crazy yeah who knows i mean everyone thinks uncharted is kind of holding that baton for indiana jones in the video game world so we'll see how mm-hmm. this compares what is what kind of game yeah. is it going to be we don't have a clue right mm-hmm. right, right right cool all right um speaking of lucasfilm games again the theory being oh they're going to be abandoning ea right um uh and, and making games exclusively with uh, different developer, like picking different developers. Well, that was finally confirmed uh, also this week, yep. a few days later, when Lucasfilm Games announced that they would be partnering with Ubisoft, um, mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed fame, to create an open world Star Wars game, uh, presumably single player. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is Ubisoft couldn't be farther away from EA in regards to a uh, different third party developer, uh, publisher. So, yep, that was the confirmation that I don't know if that's going to be when they might be able to start working on it now. And then as long as it comes out after the exclusivity deal ends in 2023, maybe yeah, they've can. either broken or altered or paid off the exclusivity deal. I don't know the specifics on that, but it is officially confirmed that EA is no longer does no longer have, or no longer has exclusive rights to make Star Wars games. Yep. And Lucas and our theory about Lucasfilm games being created in order to find partners, find different developers and publishers to partner with for Star Wars games was correct. Yep. So absolutely. yay, uh, let's go us. <laughs> we actually... But Ubisoft oh. is a good fit for that, I suppose, um, depending on if you like their flavor of open world games, but Ubisoft is known for making a lot of successful open world games, no matter what your opinions are on them. So uh, I do think that, yeah, I mean, open world Star Wars game with Ubisoft sounds about right Mm -hmm. specifically they were partnering with ubisoft's massive entertainment that's a very specific studio that made the division two and the crew Mm -hmm. uh using the snowdrop engine so that that's totally separate from assassin's creed that's a different engine it's different different wing um so if you liked the division two which 
is open world kind of games as a service. They're the other the other game other than Destiny that did games as a service correctly and did it mm-hmm. well yeah. and have a great game. So I think this is a fantastic fit for Star Wars. If you're going to go down that open world type game, uh, what I'm hoping for is like Ghost of Tsushima with Star Wars, but yeah. you know with yeah. blasters and stuff in there too. Uh, we failed to mention at the Bethesda story just one one click behind us. You know, oh. We have this Indiana Jones announcement, but it's under Bethesda. Bethesda partnered with Microsoft, so is. Is Indiana yeah. Jones going to be an Xbox exclusive? I don't know. We don't really know. I mean, that's still up in the air because even though, um, what's the guy's name? Phil Spencer has mm-hmm. hinted at the possibility. You know that they're keeping their they're keeping their cards close to their chest, though. Um, and yeah, we'll see because Microsoft makes money either way at this point. Right. So. <laughs> cool thing is, like uh, Indiana Jones will probably be on Game Pass day one yeah. uh, in 2026 when it comes out, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, who knows where it'll be on PlayStation? So with right. Star Wars, like we saw EA's history with B- Battlefront, Battlefront Two, ten years of games. Right? We have mm. Battlefront One, Battlefront Two. Battlefront Two was a major debacle, a horrible controversy about microtransactions. They had to completely yep. rebuild the game, and then EA's track record with Bioware and forcing Bioware to use Frostbite for and for and things that are not for its intended purposes. Frostbite is an engine developed for Battlefield, and they yeah. they told Bioware to make their RPG, make Dragon song. Age, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and then Anthem, of course, trying to use that engine, and just it wasn't a good fit. It clued together. But then EA partnered with Respawn to make Jedi Fallen Order, which was incredible. It was an yeah. absolutely amazing game. And, and then they used Frostbite, right? They used Unreal for that, didn't they? Uh, I have no idea what engine that game is. I'm sure it's uh, something check. along those lines. Um, yeah. And then we had, most recently, Star Wars Squadrons, which is in the flavor of, like, Rogue Squadron, and yeah. that was received really well. And so, like, they're hitting their stride finally, but what are they doing? Partnering with studios that do things really, really well and getting away from this idea of forcing your studios to use a specific engine or a specific yeah. asset. So I think it seems this like is awesome. they've learned awesome. their lesson, but it's too little too late. Too little too so, late. But it, doesn't, it also doesn't mean that they're not going to... They're still not going to partner with EA. So I still think that, again, the, the successful franchises the EA has handled with the license like Jedi Fallen Order, mm-hmm. I still think that'll get a sequel. Yeah, oh yeah. Squadrons yep. will probably get a sequel. Yep. Um, and and depending on how those go, EA may still be able to make Star Wars games. And it, for those out there who are hoping for a KOTOR right. uh, new entry Reboot, in KOTOR, yep. you might get it, because Bioware uh, yeah. could get their hands now on... Oh, they always have been able to get their hands on it because they're under EA. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that still might be in the future as well. Yeah, great so. point to highlight that the EA exclusivity is gone, but it doesn't mean they're excluded <laughs> from yeah. games yeah. in the future. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, um, but Disney slash Lucasfilm games have their options open now, which is mm-hmm. nice, which is great. And it can only benefit the Star Wars fans and Star Wars games fans at large. So and I'm excited, dude. Right like, oh my yeah. gosh, like Shadows of the Empire was amazing. Rogue Squadron was amazing. Mm-hmm. We had some great Star Wars games, Episode One Racer, and, and those are all developed by different people. I mean, Lucas, yep. Lucas Films, and I mean, Lucas Arts was involved in those things too. But then it kind of like thinking about Lucas Film games and their existence again. What if we start getting things like Escape from Monkey Island? Like, yeah. what if we get reboots yeah. on on those types of adventure games? That'd be super fun. Yeah. I can so. imagine Escape from Monkey Island, but like styled like Uncharted, but with the like the gameplay, like Uncharted, but but with the puzzles, all of the puzzles, and with all of the humor, and mm-hmm. even the like, even the like cartoon, like they could totally go cel shaded with it or something. Yeah. That would be an amazing game. I'd be into it. So, mm-hmm. um, cool. Yeah, that would that'd be great. I'm looking forward to it. But yep, cool. Let's move on to our next story. Uh, uh, let's not spend too long on the actual political happenings, but right. for those who li- were living under a rock over the last week, <laughs> a group of uh protesters who were Terrorists. in support of donald trump dissenters who were, uh, i'll get there they were <laughs> they started as protesters so we'll, well they were there to protest uh the um election reading, results the election result the reading of the election results yeah, yeah which is which is a entirely ceremonial thing but for some reason the trump's trump and his supporters got it in their heads that the vice president could overthrow the electoral results, or at least throw them into question, or whatever, I don't know. Doesn't matter, it was wrong and unconstitutional what they wanted him to do, so uh, the Vice President, Mike Pence, said, I'm not going to do that, and so there were a bunch of protesters there. Well, the protest got out of hand and went from protesting to sedition? uh, Domestic uh, terrorism. Treason, domestic terrorism, whatever you want to call it. It was bad. Uh, They stormed the Capitol and uh, in an attempt to try to force the lawmakers 
to overthrow the elect the uh, democratically determined election. Uh, yep. So yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was not good, and uh, so that happened this week. Um, what effect has that had uh, on the gaming industry? Um, Termite. <laughs> well, that was actually over a week ago. A week later, so that was Wednesday, and then this past Wednesday, within a week ago, uh, President uh, Trump was impeached for inciting said mm -hmm. protests and terrorism. Yeah. And after that happened, so that was two crazy Wednesdays in a row, then the gaming industry responded here uh, <laughs> with the story we're actually going to get into. So by way of Kotaku from Ian Walker, the ESA halts political donations after U.S. Capitol storming. Uh, the Entertainment Associ Software Association, the ESA, plans to stop political donations in the wake of storming of the United States Capitol building by right-wing insurrectionist mob hell-bent on keeping Donald Trump in power. And then they actually quote gamesindustry.biz, given the events and actions that led to the violence at the U.S. Capitol, we are pausing contributions from the ESA PAC as we reflect on the tragedy and our path forward. The ESA, which among other things oversees the ESRB rating system, organizes E3, um, that's what they said in their statement. So um, they frequently donated pol to politicians in both Democratic and Republican parties since 2012. Though the largest shares often went to Republicans, no surprise, several benefactors were connected to attempts to overturn or discredit Joe Biden's victory in the most recent presidential election, including Republican Kevin McCarthy from California, Republican Buddy Carter from Georgia, and there's some other Republicans that all tried to do that. Um, this isn't the first time the ESA has publicly waded into politics when Trump instituted a 2017 ban of travelers from a handful of Muslim-majority countries. The organization acknowledged the importance of maintaining a global community in video game development. That same year, however, the ESA praised Trump's tax plan, which largely cut corporate tax rates and put more money in the hands of the wealthy. So basically the ESA being a capitalist PAC lobby organization yeah. lobbying or of course they're gonna side and that's why i said of course republicans usually favor businesses and put money and, in the yeah. pockets mm -hmm. of corporations and such so it makes sense but it now they're they're pulling all of their funding across the board mm -hmm. um yeah. which i think is kind of a weird way to approach it uh if you're gonna make a point you should still support the ones that i think they're i think they're, they're following good. yeah they're following um they're following, I think, a couple other examples. I read something about Visa pulling their political donations as well, mm. the credit card company. Yeah. Um, and it was a very the, – the, when I first saw it, it was a, the only reason it caught my eye was because the title was very misleading. It made it seem like Visa was halting any political donation transactions <laughs> across uh, the platform. That'd be and crazy. So people were like, what? And yeah. so there were some clarifying points. They were like, no, 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 no. Visa, as a company, donates to certain political um, – uh, politicians and they have halted they've halted their own internal donating um not they're not going to suspend you from donating to someone right that's the only reason it caught my eye but i think there have been some some bigger companies like that that mm -hmm. have that have done the same so i think i think it's a, i think it's sort of like a like a uh like a like a freeze like in the same way that you would you know if someone got a hold of your credit card you'd maybe go nuclear option and be like just freeze the account completely freeze the account right um it seems like it's like spending freeze until we sort this out i don't think their intention is to stop donating to the quote worthy candidates it's to it's just sort of stop donating altogether put right. a freeze on it for a second so that they can actually do a proper audit and figure out the politicians who most align with their mm -hmm. what i wish uh, they would do is just principles. not donate to the people that they list here the republicans that still continued to buck to like buck the system yeah. and vote against democracy and try to mm -hmm. like the ones who resisted objected to the results i think yeah. the esa should be a little bit more granular and say we're not going to contribute to those candidates we're going to do right. all of our donations over here so that way you know they they mm -hmm. and that might be how like you would handle it personally but i i, right. I feel like as an organization um it, it may be worth doing the nuclear option for a second just uh yeah uh, it doesn't sound like it, i mean i i wouldn't imagine it's going to be a long long-term thing so um the, yeah the, the funny since who didn't storm the capitol are already in a pretty decent spot <laughs> in regards to <laughs> yeah. uh in regards to their uh election uh um you know prospects so. you talk about how like visa it, you know backed out their contributions i think dow the oil company refuses to work with the trump administration now um mm -hmm. it, it's n change doesn't happen until you start actually hitting them where their what their language is yeah. and that's money yeah and like now these organizations are getting behind them and, and affecting them so change is actually happening now but it's sad right. that it took major corporations okay. money to actually yeah. make them want to change instead of just by their ethics yeah. or lack Principle. thereof yep. yeah exactly so 
Yep. Cool. I, uh, any further discussion of that might get us devolved <laughs> into a complete political discussion. <laughs> no. Is that what we want to avoid? We want to talk about games. So let's move along and talk about how the USJ announced its postponing opening of Super Nintendo World from previously announced February 4th due to ongoing COVID-19 situations. So the Ooh. Termites Childhood Dream Place was supposed to exist and open in February uh, in Japan, and uh, it was a big hadou that we talked about it on the show. They had this mm-hmm. awesome video showcasing the Mario Kart uh, ride as being their like showcase there. Yeah. Uh, little did I know, there was actually other areas of the park that are still slated to be open and are starting to be built out now, and there's like a Donkey Kong-themed world, etc. cetera. Uh, and I don't know the details about those. But what happened was... The USJ, which I don't, is the Universal Studios Japan, USJ, yeah. has indefinitely, mm-hmm. indefinitely delayed the opening of Super Nintendo World after Osaka Prefecture declared a state of emergency due to COVID-19. And they apologized to all the guests and stakeholders and explained that the opening date will only be decided and announced after the state of emergency is lifted. So IGN adds, Bowser's Castle or Koopa's Castle in Japan is an immense reconstruction of the iconic location from the games. Visitors would have been able to climb a sweeping grand staircase at the top, which is enormous, imposing bronze statue of Bowser himself. The scale is seriously impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I remember, now I'm talking about it, um, the preview footage they showed it didn't seem like there was a lot of space. Like yeah. Super Mario World was, or Super Nintendo World was a small section of the, the broader Ooh, Universal the studios. studios. Yeah. And so like funneling a bunch of folks in through would have been very, very dangerous as far as COVID spreading. Right. And yeah. It's, 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 uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's with, with everything going on, it's easy to forget in a lot of ways that we're still, <laughs> we're still fighting this pandemic and we're in the final lap too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's still dangerous. And mm-hmm. again, there's the thing, the thing is evolving as I predicted way back in, in March is we're getting new strains of it. We're getting more, uh, you know, and the more it, the more it spreads, the more hosts it has, the more it replicates, and the more chances it has of mutating again and either being more deadly or more resistant to the vaccine. In either case, that still postpones and delays or, or increases the damage done by this pandemic. So there really is kind of a race right now um, to beat the pandemic with the vaccine. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's still happening. So it's like, as you put here, you said sad, but right call. Oh yeah, uh, and I agree. Yeah. It is, it is hundred percent the right call for them mm-hmm. to do this. Like, just hold on. I know. I mean, for everybody out there struggling, but also for businesses too. It's like, hold on. We're in the last lap. You know, vac- a vaccine exists, and they are rolling out as quickly as they can. So, like, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll mm-hmm. get there probably this year, uh, and uh, that is, uh, that is a good, uh, yeah. So it will probably open this year. It's just it is unfortunate that they didn't get to open um, as early as February. Yeah, so. I think remember, Univers- remember when they were like, "Hey, this uh, pandemic will be over in like a few weeks." <laughs> I never believed that, but remember when they said that? Remember, there was like, one person. There was people. one person. <laughs> one person with a very very large following Platform. said that, yep. mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and it has ruined and in endangered millions of lives. But I won't. Yes. I won't go. Crazy. We're not going to get political. <laughs> yeah. But- <laughs> no, the, the, the park sounds awesome. I can't wait for... Uh, <laughs> we're not going to get political after we've already gotten a little yeah, political. Right. <laughs> the park sounds awesome, though. And like you said, yeah, uh, it is. it would be cool to go to it sometime. But I also am a kind of person who doesn't love large crowds of people. So um, it also sounds like... It sounds like one of those dr- nightmare dreams mm-hmm. where it's like, on the one... It, you know, the idea of going is a dream. And the rides, those like 13 seconds you're on those rides are a dream. Yep. And then... Uh, the rest of the time is just a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, people. And, and like, there's an episode of South Park where Cartman goes to that amusement park by himself, and it's like mm-hmm. some people's dream. Oh and my I gosh, used to that think, is 100% yeah, I used to think that was me. And like, oh man, I would love to go to a park when it's empty. And there is like a cool like feeling about that. And I've done that. I've been to King's Dominion mm-hmm. when it was like dead and empty. Yeah, but yeah. It, there's a certain joy, and especially after being isolated and quarantined for a year. Um, there will be a joy of experiencing that park with other people and being in a crowd. So I wonder how that's going to affect. If you want to be in a crowd, go to like a concert where it's a celebration. And that's what the uh, Nintendo World is. Ways. It's a celebration uh, of Nintendo, man. Yeah, but it's a lot of stinky people standing in a stinky line. So is a concert, <laughs> and they're all sweaty because they're mosh pitting. Uh, yeah, but you're moshing. all but you're doing a thing together as opposed to you know like twelve people get to do the thing yeah, and then everybody else is yeah, standing, standing in line. line. Yeah. Thing. Get out of my yeah. way. You cut. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Except it's a bunch of people screaming at you in Japanese because, again, yeah. this thing is in Japan. We're not yep. going to Super Nintendo World anytime soon. Persona 5 is set in Tokyo, right? 
Uh, it's set in uh, like around. So you know how like Manhattan is like part. New York City is like multiple districts. I yeah. Think it's like a district of Tokyo. But yes, I do think it's set in Tokyo. For some reason, I thought it was Osaka, but I'm not convinced. I, but anyway, it could be. It yeah. could be. Have you started it yet? No. Side note. Mm-mm. Okay. No. All right. Um, cool. Well, talk, speaking of Nintendo, <laughs> we'll keep kind going because we like diverged into Persona for a little bit. But speaking of Nintendo, um, Pokemon, the new Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Snap Two, Pokemon. It's Snap It's called 3. New Pokemon Snap. I know what it's called. It's a dumb name. Uh, Your mom's finally, a dumb name. She is. Um, but uh, <laughs> it is finally got a release date, and there's a new trailer to go along with it. So and go check out the trailer. Me. It is dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am extremely excited about Pokemon Snap. I can't wait. The original, this is like, so I've always said, and I predicted that all the big video games in 2021 were going to be delayed. Like, all of them. Mm-hmm. Because COVID, Nintendo is weirdly, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it. But Age of Calamity yeah, was not delayed. Yeah, and uh-huh. this new Pokemon Snap. So the announcement date that they announced this week is April 30th, 2021. Nice. So I don't know how they pulled it off announcing it last year and it still stayed on track with no delay announcement or anything. As far as we know, Breath of the Wild 2 is not delayed, but they they don't really have a, do- a date for that. It was so. delayed, they just never announced right. it. So it's they not did- publicly delayed, but I do believe it was probably internally delayed. I think it would have been out like fall this year, but now mm-hmm. at this point it's probably going to be like spring next year. Yep. So uh, They've been hitting it, man. They had Super Mario 3D All-Stars, mm-hmm. uh, Paper yeah, Mario, and now... And Animal they, Crossing. I mean, Animal, Animal Crossing, yeah. At the beginning of it. But, right. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, ne- this year, now we have new Pokemon Snap. We have Bowser's Fury, Mario 3D World yeah. coming out in February, uh, and then that's in April. So, this is by way of Polygon. Uh, Michael McWhorter, he wrote a little blurb here I'll read. Players will work with Professor Mirror and his assistant Rita on an ecological survey to photograph Lentol Pokemon thriving in nature. According to a news release, players will tour the Lentol Islands in an all rails I'm sorry, an on rails vehicle known as the Neo One through various paths. Lentol Pokemon will be attracted to fluff fruit, an edible item, which will assuredly make photographing creatures in the wild much easier. As with the original Pokemon Snap, players' photos of Pokemon will be judged on their pose, how large the creatures appear in the photos, and whether they're facing the camera lens and where they fall in the frame. Pokemon behavior, which will change over time in new Pokemon Snap, and players, quote, may see Pokemon behaving in entirely new ways. The news release also teases a new phenomenon native to the Lental region, Illumina, a mysterious glow that emits from some Pokemon. Ha! I can't wait. It's going to be so good. So, I'm excited. Nice. Yeah. All right, do we want to get into this? Can we do it in, like, five minutes? Uh, we have uh, two minutes left on our show. We can just talk about Jason Schreier's expose. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, yep. so Jason Schreier has posed, or re- this week posted a sort of kind of expected, I-, I don't know if I would have called it necessarily that he was going to do this, but, like, when it came out, I was like, oh, yeah, of course he did the story on this, but we're all aware of the cyberpunk debacle from December 10th. If you need a refresher, basically what happened was Cyberpunk said, you know, they only sent out PC copies to reviewers, so reviewers only got to see one version of the game. And when the game came out, it was clear that it did not run very well on the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One base hardware. Um, The step-up consoles, the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro were able to run it okay. PlayStation 5 was able to run it, was able to run it fine. The Xbox Series X was able to run it fine. PCs were able to run it fine if they met, met specifications. Um, but the the vast majority of people playing these games were playing them on the base hardware, the hardware they've had, you know, they, that they've been selling. <laughs> for seven for years. Seven years. Yep. And the hardware that these games were advertised to run on and that they told investors ran surprisingly well on. Um, if surprisingly, if the, if the uh, you know, bottom line for surprisingly well is runs like crap but runs at all, uh, then yes, it ran surprisingly well. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, it was a big thing. Um, it was super buggy on all versions of the game, um, but specifically on those, uh, especially those old uh, old consoles and uh, last gen consoles, I should say. Uh, so yeah, it was a big, huge, huge uh, debacle. They publicly offered refund, like they they had made a full refund policy and all that stuff. Um, and then inevitably, Jason Schreier talked to their developers <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and came out with this expose where. It was something like, what was it, 20 or 50 anonymous developers? 20. People who actually worked on the game. Was it 20? Okay, it yeah. Was, yeah. And it was somewhere between that those two numbers. Yeah. Um, so 20 anonymous people who work at CD Projekt Red and worked on Cyberpunk came forward, or not came forward, but they talked to Jason Schreier in private, and he posted this uh, uh, article. And uh, it was, uh, there was a, there was an announcement that came out 
a few days before the article. That was what we were also going to talk about. Mm -hmm. But it, it basically was another apology video from uh, CD Projekt Red, and I, I believe it was an attempt to get ahead of the article. Right. Um, but the expose dropped this week and uh, confirmed a lot of things. The, a lot of the footage that was shown of the game, like last year, was faked in the same way that, in the same vein that Anthem's footage was faked. Um, and they spent more time working on that than actually polishing the game. Uh, there was, uh, you know, there was all the kinds of things you've expected from like crunch culture and these kinds of uh, fraught developments before, which is like management decided on a release date and then didn't tell the developers. The developers who expected the game to come out in 2022 <laughs> were told that it was coming out in April of 2020, about yep. uh, two years before they expected it to, to drop. And mm -hmm. uh, them knowing, of course, the project uh, and progress of it at that point were baffled. No wonder it got delayed three more times that year. And uh, and yeah, all kinds of um, all kinds of other things, uh, crunch, mandatory crunch, and all that stuff too. So, uh, anyways, the biggest news to me that came out of that was there was a little timeline about. This. So you can get all mad and, and upset. We should be like looking at CD Projekt Red differently. That we should be holding their feet to the fire. Yeah. I, I like that the industry is kind of poking at them against their PR and is forcing mm -hmm. them to kind of acknowledge and recognize these problems with video game development and the culture there. Uh, and it's good. Like we've always said, and I know I always, um, I always give the corporate reasons for why these things happen and mm -hmm. not trying to explain yeah, it away, apologies. but yeah. <laughs> and right on the corporate apologies here, but this is good. I'm glad it's happening. Uh, Martin Iwinski, he's the CD project red co-founder. He had this long five minute apology video and in it, he, tries to take ownership for the problems but then immediately goes on to blame the QA team uh and I mean it's not it's not that great of a video but within it was this tiny little time frame of the updates and of course to no one's surprise the next gen upgrades are not coming until the end of 2021 so yeah. late way later this year which is kind of on my shelf for quite a bit <laughs> yeah uh but we're supposed to be getting a a big patch within they said the next 10 days and that video was several days ago we still haven't seen it yet so i guess within a week we should get a big right. the mm -hmm. big 1.07 patch and then there'll be another bigger one in february and so they laid that that like timeline out with smaller updates after that so they're focusing more on the development to fix this they've pushed their dlc out which is part of the news that came out of this video so that whole timeline is newsworthy i think and worth talking about yeah. here mm -hmm. um i'm personally not playing the rest i'm almost done with it except for the last run through of all of the gigs and the night city police department yeah stuff mm -hmm. so once this patch comes out i'll look at the patch notes and see if they fixed those bugs so i don't have to replay anything and then i'll go through and platinum it and put it away until the next gen version comes out at the end of the year and when i revisit it yeah yeah definitely i, I mean i'm i've already platinum it so it's just it's already been deleted from my hard drive and sitting on my shelf and again good game all things considered if you're playing if you're playing it on the on the newer hardware um so it's it, this is one of those gray areas where it's like you want to applaud the developers who did an excellent job under the constraints they had mm -hmm. while still also rightly condemning the management who made bad choices and mm -hmm. are you know basically ruining their business but um they try they, they there was one apt comparison i think he made where he was like they were trying to make a game on the caliber of like skyrim um and red they said they, they cited skyrim gta and red dead redemption i think as sort of the inspirations of the quality Mm -hmm. the, the type of quality to size ratio of what they were trying to accomplish with cyberpunk uh, but they did it with a with uh, a workforce of about like a quarter of what mm -hmm. they got so they had like 500 employees whereas rockstar and, thousands uh, and they have thousands and multiple studios all working right. on the same project and mm -hmm. so it's like they were they they were constantly hiring people and having a lot of turnover all while uh, riding their employees into the ground because even though they were hiring, 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 they never had enough people to to accomplish their over ambitious project. Mm -hmm. um, and there was there was something about a manager coming in and making them scrap the project and all that stuff. So it's like Ooh. and and you know they end up having to like size down the city about halfway through development, which mm -hmm. helped. But uh, still, yeah. So it's it, you should read ultimately read the article if you're interested in this story. It was a really good expose. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason Schreier knocked it out of the park and rightly put put their feet to the fire. Yep. Um, the same way he did. EA and um, and if you're Rockstar, really into drama you know, and you want to follow like other people's mess, you can find the response that Iwinski had on Twitter 
<laughs> where, he, where he uh, scathed Jason Schreier and tried to negate some of his arguments. And I they was like, this is ugly. You can't go back and forth. Like, you yeah. cannot. They like, always, yeah. Jason Schreier gets a lot of crap, but he does, the man does, the man does his job right. well. And, mm-hmm. um, and people just can't handle constructive criticism sometimes that's that's we just had a podcast on criticism and, and constructive criticism is is valuable and this hurts i imagine this is hurtful but it's it's meant to be constructive it's meant to be like here are the problems fix them yep <laughs> so see uh, anyways that's all the time we have for the day when a little bit over time we normally that we normally do um but uh there are lots to cover so mm-hmm. uh as always please check out the podcast that drops on mondays um, the next time you'll see us is Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, you'll see Termite playing something. And, I haven't figured it out um, yet, but yep. Oh, okay, all right. And then, uh, as then you'll also see us next week, next Monday. So Termite, if you want to send them off with all of the wonderful things you send them off with, go to eightbitpodsmash.com. That's our landing website where you can find links to all of our social media outlets, all of our video outlets, all of our twitches, and all everything we do. It's all there. <laughs> <laughs> Hit us up on all the social medias. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us so you get notifications and alerts for all of our goings-ons. When Penguin Man gets a brand new camera and wants to surprise everyone with a stream, how are you going to know about it if you're not subscribed to us? So please go do that and hit the, the bells and write your comments, reactions, concerns, thoughts, and ideas across all of the social medias to interact with our community. We have a Discord server. There's a link to that server in all of our show notes, as well as 80bitpodsmash.com. So I look forward to being with you guys on Wednesday as I determine what I'm going to stream between now and then. And we will see you later this week. See you next week.